the Zhigu DH100 Portable Power Station. Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. My friends over at Radioddity sent this to me for my test use and review and so that I can share it with you. Let's get it out of the box and see what we have. Everything was very well packaged and protected in the box. We have some documentation on how to use the unit. We have a 110 wall outlet power brick for charging the unit. We have a USB-A to USB-C cable. And then we know they really want us to use this with the G90 because here we have a G90 fitting. Some of you are going to recognize that. What do we have on the charger itself? Well, we have a charging station for our phone on the top and then here on the front end we have a 110 outlet we've got inputs of a barrel connector DC in and then we've got a 60 watt PD in and out as far as output we have 12 volt 8 amps power pole we have a 5 volt 3.1 amp USB a we have a QC 3.0 USB a and then we have a 12 volt 8 amp barrel connector out so let's get this charged up and start testing the flicker you're seeing on the charge indicator, well, that's the result of my camera. You can't see that with the naked eye. Everything looks normal. To my eyeballs, there is no flickering. The manual does give us lots of information on input and output options, as well as power ratings. The manual also tells us the inverter here is a modified sine wave. That means we could have problems using this with our ham radios. I'll demonstrate that in the shack and portable because portable, I think, is the assumption of how we would be using this. The manual does tell us we shouldn't be doing AC and DC power output at the same time. And that probably goes back to the modified sine wave inverter issues. I already have power solutions, so for me there would need to be a compelling reason for me to make an investment here. In your particular case, you may not have a closet full of power solutions, and this would be a great one-stop shop for a number of different features. Again, for me, I would be looking for what can this do that my other gear cannot do. I have batteries that power all of my radios. I can add things to them so I can charge my iPhone and other accessories. I don't have anything with a 110 outlet, so that's what's intriguing to me here. So I purchased this little heater for water because when I go POTA, certainly not in the summertime, but in the wintertime, it'd be nice to have a hot cup of coffee on the Tampa Bay beach. Based on the power output rating, I shouldn't be able to heat up the water here. This little heater requires 300 watts of output, and I believe the maximum output on this power station from Zhaigu is 100 watts. Amazingly, it does pull it off. And here is one of my favorite cups of coffee. It is a brand that's out there that is very strong. It's the best instant coffee, in my opinion, I've ever had. I don't prefer instant coffee, but out on POTA. I'm not taking a percolator with me or my fancy French press. This will just have to do. And let's not kid ourselves. We're going to need to put like four packs of this into this cup to get it to the strength that we want it. The power station obviously is meant for on the go, away from your shack, away from your home, away from power. I'm not connected to any power here. My antenna system, of course, is connected to shack ground. And so that'll give us a baseline to measure performance once we take this power station backyard portable and are disconnected from any grounding system in addition to disconnected from shore power. You saw the IC705 when I turned it on was at 50% power. That means it's running off of the internal battery of the radio. And then when I turned on the DC out of the power station, then I went to 100% power, meaning I'm drawing power from the Jaigu power station, and that 705 is connected to the power pole ports. The FX4CR is being powered at the same time, and I'm just using my antenna switch to go back and forth between the two, and the FX4CR does not have an internal battery, and I'm running it directly off of the barrel port out on the Jaigu power station. I'm going to power up my iPhone uh, it is already turned on. I'm going to see if it will charge on that USB-C in out on the bottom left hand corner of the Zhaigu power station. It, it doesn't. It won't power and you're going to see that here in a second. I don't know if that was me not understanding how it operated or it's intentionally off when you're using the power station in this configuration. But then I do switch over to the USB 
a out on the power station and I'm able to charge my iPhone no problem and you're going to see that there is no interference on the radios my IC705 isn't picking anything up so using this as a power station in the shack where you have proper grounding not a problem but that's not the use case here let's go ahead and turn on the AC and unbelievably it didn't make any difference i fully expected based on the modified sine wave from this inverter that we were going to have some type of a problem but here in the shack it didn't seem to create any interference for us now this is not a unit that's meant to be used in the shack so this isn't really the relevant test let's go backyard portable and see how this operates I own a lot of antennas, probably more than anybody should. I only hang on to antennas that I like, and I only share with you reviews of antennas that I like. I don't believe in wasting my time or your time on antennas that I don't think are good for my use case or yours. The BD7 Maple ground spike and that G Gable coil and their really small telescoping antenna. It's one of my favorite for quick setups. You just saw how quickly I set it up in the backyard. All I need to do is go over there and pull up that telescoping antenna, adjust the coil slightly to get close to 20 meters. I've used it so many times, I know exactly uh, where that coil needs to be. I'm on the air in no time flat here in the backyard. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> well, that's not good. <laughs> okay. Is it because my power cord is on top of this and touching? Let's get the power cord out of the way. How about now? All right, I got you, Gary. Come on in. Interesting. Okay. So AC's not on, DC's not on. Is there any difference when I plug it in? Okay, plugging it in and not plugging it in is irrelevant when it's not powered on. So I'm at 50% power on the IC705. Let's turn on the DC. That's not good. Nope, not good. Uh, let's move this a little bit away from the antenna. Wire, the cable, coax, there we go. Get the power cord completely away. Here we go. Huh, well. All right, that's with DC power. So that's a problem. Why did it work in the shack and not here? Now I've got I've got grounding on the antenna system or a shack ground that I was connected to inside. And that goes out to my single point utility box on the outside wall. Obviously here, I don't have uh, any grounding ground radials. I didn't bother putting those on. Let me go get some ground radials. I can't imagine how on earth that's going to make any difference and it shouldn't but let's just give it a fair shake. Always use silicon wire simply because, watch how easy this comes untangled. And if you've watched my grounding system, you know I use an alligator clip. I'm just going right over top of the coax. Hi. Okay, so, here we go. Huh, get out. Are you kidding me? All 
right, here's our power. Get out of town. Seriously? Okay, I, I have to admit, I'm a little shocked by that. Huh. Wow. Okay, that's a pleasant surprise. So we're at 50% power. Radials are now spread out. Now, I'm in some sunlight glaring down on my glasses. I can't see on the screen. I don't believe there's any interference coming through. Let's turn it back off again. I am just blown away by that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, I just removed the radials and there's the answer to the question. Okay, mystery solved. Okay, big surprise there. Get your grounding in and then we work perfectly. Now we can continue on with the test because we want to see whether or not adding anything to this creates any more interference. Let's start with our iPhone. Okay, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of interference with the iPhone on. I, I definitely am. All right, I'm not even uh, turning on the AC and I get interference as soon as I plug that in. And see there it's gone. So as soon as you plug in an AC device, you get interference, even with the inverter not working. So let's go ahead and put the inverter on. I apologize, it is on. <laughs> so it is now on. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes, yes, it is on. This is now operational. And this is exactly what we expected based on the instructions. That is not a pure sine wave inverter. Yep, all right, there we go. And now it's off. Yes, no AC outside simultaneous to working um, your radio. I think we have all the answers. So what are my final thoughts on this new Jaigu power station? Well, first of all, it takes a lot of guts to enter into this saturated market. There are an awful lot of people that have entered into this market and they're selling their wares on Amazon and all other kinds of retail outlets. I would say the advantage to the Jaigu unit is that it is small, even though it looks large to me sitting here on the workbench, it really does just fit in the palm of your hand. And the cost of this is relatively small in comparison to some of those other power stations that do multitask. This doesn't multitask. And when we talk about cost, there is a $15 discount below in the description that if you follow my link, you can get $15 off of this. I think it probably is on the Radiotity website now between $130 and $150. It does precisely what it says it will do. It'll power your radio. It will act as a flashlight, which I didn't really talk about, but you do have a light here in the back of the unit and you cycle through the button here to get your light on. Brighter, less bright, flashing, SOS, the normal thing that we expect to see on devices like this. I've mentioned that it is multi-capable. It's multi-purposed. It just can't multitask. So if you're looking to do one thing at a time, power your radio. It does it. If you're looking to boil a pot of hot water for some coffee, it'll do that. If you want to charge your iPhone, it'll do that. The more expensive units on the market today can do it all, or they should do it all. And one of the first things you would do would test the interference that you might have with your radio gear. And if it's a good inverter, a pure sine wave, you shouldn't have interference. But this is one third, one quarter the cost or less of many of those units. So it all depends on what your budget is and how much weight you like to carry around. Small form factor uh, priced in such a fashion that it's not out of budget. So perhaps it's for you. If you haven't uh, gotten into ham radio yet, you're just starting, you're looking for something that is reasonably priced and again, multi-purpose, this might be something you would be interested in. That's my opinion on it. The compelling thing for me would be to get that AC outlet, which I don't have on any of my other gear today. I hope you found this useful, friend. Talk to you soon. 73.